I think it's important to recognize that there are two different types of masks. There are medical devices which are designed to stop you exhaling over other people. So surgical masks are a good example of those. And then there's personal protective equipment, which is designed to protect you from breathing things in. And FFP masks are of the second type. They're personal protective equipment, um, whereas many of the surgical masks, say the blue ones that you see people wearing, are medical devices designed to stop you breathing over other people. So the key difference is, are you wearing a mask to stop you breathing over other people, or to protect yourself from breathing things in? And that's what the FFP masks are. Well, some people might ask if they're so good, why haven't we been ordered to wear them before? Great. So I think the main thing that has changed between the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak and now is that there's much greater accessibility and availability of masks. And right at the beginning, there was a worry that health people working within health wouldn't get access to the um, FFP masks in particular. And thus the public were um, advised to make their own masks or wear alternatives just to stop the competition with people working in healthcare. Now, of course, um, more factories, more people are making these masks. They're, plenty, they're much more available. And thus, because there's less competition for wearing these FFP masks, um, I think now the advice has changed um, and we've seen various authorities around the place encouraging people to now wear these FFP masks. Now, you're an expert in evidence-based healthcare. Or what you know, concrete evidence is there that these FFP2 masks can actually do the job? Great. So I think, and I've, I've worked in some fairly um, high-category biological labs in the past, and anyone who's worked in those sorts of environments knows that it's not just a case of slapping a mask on. There's training as well, wearing gloves, wearing the right equipment, washing your hands in an appropriate way, handling things appropriately. And, of course, it's unreasonable to expect the public to have that, that same, same training. So I think people just buying an FFP mask and putting it on, it's not going to be as effective as someone who's actually trained to wear one. Um, having said that, um, as long as if you have to go into a place where there's going to be crowds or you're going to have close contact with other people or you're going to be in confined spaces, it does make sense to wear one of these because even if it won't be, say, as protective as it might be if you're wearing it in a laboratory and you're also wearing it with a visor and, and lab coats and gloves as well, I think it will make at least a, a, a difference. Um, so the main thing is to stay away from crowds, stay away from close contacts, stay away from confined spaces. But if you do have to go into those places, wearing a mask and especially an FFP mask and critically one without a valve, because if you have a valve on the mask, it filters the air going in but not going out. So if part of the aim is to avoid breathing over other people, um, try and avoid having a valve because that can sometimes shoot the air out over other people. But if you can get an FFP mask without a valve, it does make sense to wear it if you're going to be in close contact with other people.